G'day guys. Uh, my name's Marty from uh, Ridgepoint Rail up here in Queensland, uh, a dealer for DigiKeys. Um, I just, um, there's some excellent videos on how to set these up in Windows, but uh, there's a couple of things that I notice might be helpful, um, so I want to share them with you. Um, first of all, I'm using Windows 10. Um, at the moment, and as you see, I don't. I have got a classic desktop. I don't have any tiles. Um, I used a program called Classic Shell, and uh, Classic Shell will give you the the good old pop-up menu and icon, so you can search for things down here. So um, I will be using that later. So it's called Classic Shell. You'll install that. You'll get rid of all those tiles on Windows 10, and um, you'll have the awesomeness of and speed of Windows 10, but the usability of Windows 7, 8, and so anyway moving on let's go into uh, how to find the manual so after you've downloaded the software you can click on the Digi Central here and the manual open up and uh, there's search here let's type in com7 man not going to help me I'm going to type in control F I'm in there if you control F you can search word and PDF documents so I'll type in com7 and then I come down to this little page here. So COM7 is the port for LocoNet, ExpressNet, and COM9. There you go. There you can see all those down here if you if you explode that up. But I'm going to take a shortcut around that. So mine's connected at the moment via USB. This is brand new out of the box. So connected via USB. If you're lucky, you'll get a serial number down here, which means you can proceed. Now, if you don't have that serial number, um, you might be in a bit of a pickle, but this is the way out of it. So if you uh, just click on the start menu here, I'm gonna type in D-E-V-M-A-N for device manager. Device manager will come up. And have my device manager jump into ports here. And here I have the DR5000, the DR command on COM60, COM59 for LocoNet, and COM58 for ExpressNet. If you want to change those there, just go to Properties, Port Settings, to the Advanced tab here, select your desired COM port from the drop down box, change that to 61 so you can see how my computer reacts, click OK, and then OK, and that's changed to 61, lovely, and we'll change that one to 62, Properties, Port Settings, Advanced again. 62, click OK, and then OK, and DR command, that's the one I'm using at the moment, I think. Uh, properties, port settings, advanced, let's flick that down to 63, OK, and OK, no, no problem. So that's quickly how you change all your COM settings, and then you should have this. Okay, after you've changed the COM settings, please disconnect the USB and reconnect it and then our serial number comes up great that's first step done where we've got your first step you've got your serial number back up here you can't quite configure it just yet you can have to i've found the best way to configure it is with usb and wi-fi at the same time so we're now we've got usb working let's work on the wi-fi so click on this wi-fi and here it brings up this and I need to turn this DHCP server to enabled and then click OK here. Lovely. Now I'm going to just close that down and find my DR5000 software, wherever that is. D, 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 D. Here it is. Thank you. Open that up. All right, let's top that. I thought that might happen. Click back to enabled. Okay, we're definitely enabled now. When I make a change, I do like to shut it down, as you can tell, and restart it and just uh, make sure that I'm actually reading the DR5000 and not just looking at the properties of this desktop desktop app. Is 
that's what I need. Now I have this uh, confirmation here. The Wi-Fi will de restart. Alright, that's the one I wanted. So this is set to enabled now. So you do need that confirmation check screen. It'll only work after that confirmation check screen is done. Now I need to go to my Wi-Fi and there's the double six four eight dr five thousand i'm not i don't want to connect automatically the password is one two three four five six seven eight click next and then no for discoverable if you want to get off the internet so either disconnect the wi-fi turn off your home modem router however you want to do it and then you can disable any um antivirus or firewalls that you might have and if you do get a firewall warning that's saying that this software wants to get through your firewall just click allow All right that's connected now so now I should be able to play around here so I'm going to configure this for uh, Z21 uh, so I can use that uh, Z21 app uh, however, you might want to use um, ExpressNet, and ExpressNet will allow the Lens apps to work, but let's go with this one here at the moment. Sometimes if I, I have found that if I've clicked the Z21 and I don't get this green confirmation down here, that I might need to click Bridge and then Gateway and then that will allow it and then I'll be able to save those changes we'll get a restart happening now so I'm still connected but it's just restarting the software in here for this little Wi-Fi router now we can rename this too if you like so there's my desktop connected we're on the Z21 mouse, but I might rename this to, uh, say, DR5000 My Railway. Now this uh, password will remain the same. So I'm gonna click Save, and it'll restart this. And I'll disconnect from the 6648. Give it a couple of seconds. <coughs> For the Wi-Fi to restart in here and then I'll go looking for it and we'll join it come on you'll turn up in a second no maybe it won't look there we are DR5000 my railway connect one two three four five six seven eight next and no I don't want to uh, be discoverable okay now you can of course say just delete that and just have it called my railway or um, piston broke was uh, another one that I've uh, set up before so you can name it basically anything you want okay now getting on to a couple of little features in here that, that are not covered so sometimes you can actually uh, might put yourself in a situation where you might be forced to restart or do a firmware flash on this if it's crashed um, so once you've got it all set up use this export and import settings and you can all the settings that you've done at the end just um, oh no, put the date in there just, uh, 06 the 25th of June set them all backwards and save that so uh, now I've exported all the settings. Um, do that at the end, however, because there's a couple other little, little tricky things that I want you to take care of. In this track output, okay, that um, gives you these short circuit delay. Some of the early units were set at 30 milliseconds. Now, if you've got a, um, an old auto reverse loop relay, uh, the relay types are the one that clicks um, when your train goes through your reverse loop, they might need perhaps um, set to maybe 35 or 40 milliseconds. But I've noticed that all of these now are coming out with uh, 100 milliseconds. So 
if you pop it out to 100 milliseconds I think you'll find that your reverse loop um, <coughs> management will work properly otherwise the um, the short circuit protection inside your DR5000 um, used to trip out um, before the uh, reverse loop management relay clicked over so um, yeah that was a good brain scratcher but we sorted that one out so <coughs> uh, back into this um, into this loco business over here so I'm not sure whether it's um, an MRA com compliant or whatever but I do know that a lot of units um, will take the, the, the last short loco address to 127 um, so if you've got an NCE or a friend's got an NCE and they've programmed their loco to uh, say number 112 uh, 112 is actually a short address on NCE but uh, with the DR5000 with this set here the last short loco address will be 99 so uh, the DR5000 natively if you can figure a uh, give a loco an address of 112 it will be a long address but if I change this to 127 and click apply yeah that's uh, applied um, now when I put in 112 configured with the DR5000 112 will be a short address so that you can then operate that on NCE or an NCE loco between 100 and 127 you can now operate with the DigiKeys so that will usually drive you a little bit nuts I don't know what these do I've always been in the habit of just checking them anyway so that's a nice little nugget and I have seen people people get stuck on that before so that's the workaround for that guy um, everything else is, is pretty simple if you've got it connected up you can try it out here um, so you can um, or let's say if you wanted to uh, adjust the acceleration um, you can then use this read to read CV number three or write to uh, CV number three and just push the right button there um, and the address that's the service track and uh, program on main we're doing service if you want to do the service uh, let's see if it's 112 and then you can write it or you can also read the loco address here whichever one you want um, you've got a little test drive here um, and these are just if you're having issues writing reading or writing um, this act delta current you may want to up that to 70 uh, if you're having a couple of issues but if you that's where you find it if you've done the research and find out someone's pointed you off to that okay so I've done that I've done that that's no problem here the loco net T um, this is where you connect on all your track accessories like um, current sensing detection um, point motor digital controllers um, boosters on the loco net boosters uh, s88 devices get plugged into here um, LAN over here uh, lens items for the uh, express net over here um, I've not used infrared yet but I will have a little play around with that um, so and now we go down to the control go stop so this is where you can drive or you can open a switch if you open a switch let's say you're going to go you know, program a, a DR4088LN um, and you want the um, first number to be 17 you click 17 and go and then click that after you've pushed the start what is it the program button on your DR4088LN you need to hit that and then if you're only going to control 16 points you need to hit that and then that'll be controlled then so you give it you've given it its first start number and then the number of how many detection points it's going to do but um, there's plenty of stuff out there especially Ryan from Iron Planet Hobbies um, a great guy sure you've all heard of him before but um, like and subscribe his gear and we'll keep on encouraging to giving him his 
giving us great content for the DR5000, as I'm sure he's helped you all out before. Right, so I think we're away. We've, going to, we've changed this to uh, my railway, so I've got a unique uh, SSID so that no one can join it. Um, we've changed that to gateway. It's set up on Z21 wireless multi mouse. Um, the track output, we've changed the last loco address. Uh, maximum current is there. The short circuit delay is great. Um, so everything's good to go. What you could do now is um, say, use a, a smart device, download the Z21 app, um, join the DR5000 My Railway SSID with the password 12345678, um, go into the app settings and put in 192.168.16.254 and connect it and then you can bring up the drive screen and just go and run a loco and if it's successful of course you will see these move and your lights turn on and off and if I do this it will be reflected in the app or if I do it on the app it will be reflected here on the screen um, but what an absolutely wonderful little thing um, so if you have any questions um, just be sure to uh, put some comments down there or you can find me on uh, Facebook and um, contact me through there if you want to have a, a more express chat um, or you can find me on Facebook you'll be able to get my email and, and give me a chat but I'm um, quite happy to support all you guys here in Australia with the DR5000 and um, please give this a like or a dislike dislikes are just as good um, any comments and um, if you're happy to subscribe or look at my other videos but if you've got any questions or want any content covered please uh, let me know and I'll do my best to help you out okay um, see you later and thanks for watching